So today I decided that I would test out some new paper that I bought. Um, I didn't make it myself, so I um, wasn't sure of its composition and what kind of fibres would be inside of it. Um, so what you have to do, if you're not sure, obviously, is to do some tests. Um, now, a lot of people kind of want to just make things straight away and that's fine, um, but obviously you're going to make mistakes and you might have already committed yourself to how, you know, how you wanted that piece of work to look and then, of course, you're going to be disappointed. Whereas, I'm more of the mind where I'm like, I'll just do a load of random tests and then I'll be able to make a note, and you can do that either mentally or physically, um, that I would make a note about what I had found through doing the testing. So the type of things that are going to affect your cyanotype are um, paper acidity, um, which can affect it quite a lot. Also, the um, like how robust the paper is when it's going through the wet process. Um, and, and that can be varying different degrees. So I've done prints on antique papers from books and they tend to have like a little bit of a waxy kind of surface to them. Um, so I would actually advise pre-washing them is what I found on that test. Um, I've also used, today, I used the handmade papers um, and, and that was quite interesting because they're really, really fragile. Um, so obviously I just had to be very, very careful with that. I used uh, Xerox paper, which was from a book that I had bought from the internet and Xerox paper is essentially like quite cheap photocopy paper, um, which had high acid content and, uh, and was very, very thin. So the colours that I was getting from that on my cyanotypes wasn't, wasn't what I was looking for. So I ended up not using those ones. Um, cyanotype printmaking on wood, it's very porous. Um, so I haven't yet nailed that. I have tried it a few times, but it, it, it needs a little bit more time spent on it. I've had quite a bit of success doing cyanotype prints on... Um, on ceramic tiles uh, but again it's something that you have to keep working with because there are so many different little nuances to do with working with chemistry that it's it, it's very um very easy just to slightly change something and get a completely different result so cyanotypers bear in mind when you're choosing your paper that you want to have um something with a very low acid content preferably Something with very little texture, if possible. The stuff that I had today varied in different levels of texture. Um, I personally use Fabriano Cold Press Watercolour, um, but obviously it's entirely up to you guys. I've also printed on cardboard, and again, it's an, obviously it's not made to take that much water. Um, it did work but it's, it wants to peel away, so you you have to flatten it down in books to keep it safe. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I'm trying a little bit, you know, two camera talking and uh, Phil's back now, so I'm gonna finish.